This video will cover Year 9 Measurement Applications Test Preview. So these are the A and B level questions you should expect to see. I'll put some time tags in the description below for question numbers for anyone following along with the test preview. Otherwise you can just look there as well for the sorts of questions we're answering and you can get some help with the sorts of questions that you need. Question 1A is asking us to find the uh, shaded area of this composite shape. So I can see that it's a square. I know it's a square because these little symbols mean that these sides are equal. With a semicircle or a half circle taken out of it. Now uh, I'm going to be careful when I come to this because I've been given the diameter of this circle. I don't have the radius and I'm likely to need the radius. So straight away I'm just going to mark in that that's two and a half so I don't forget. I'm going to do the same thing that I was doing in the fundamentals. I'm going to give each area a name. I'm going to call this area 1 and I'm going to call this area 2. And ultimately what I'm going to do is use area 1 minus area 2 in order to solve the problem. So here we go with area 1. Area 1 is a rectangle. So I'm going to use the length times width formula, which means I'm doing 5 by 5 which is 25 square centimetres. This is where I forgot to drop my units last time. I think I wrote centimetres a couple of times because I was nervous. So just be careful in my fundamentals questions. Area 2. Now this one is a circle, but it's a half circle. So when I use my pi r squared formula, I'm going to halve it. So I've got half a circle. And I'll substitute in now. Pi times 2.5 squared divided by 2. And that will give me 9.82 square centimetres. Okay, to find the total, I'm going to say the total area is area 1 minus area 2. This just helps to organise me and lets my marker know what I'm doing so that it's very clear. And this will be 25 minus 9.82, which leaves me with 15.18 square centimetres. Question 1b is a composite shape. We're trying to find the area here. Before you even start this question, you're going to have to work out some radiuses. So the, the large circle, okay, so from here to here, the radius is going to be half of this diameter, so three and a half to here, plus five here. So this is going to be 8.5. And when we're trying to work out the small circle, so from here to here, let's put this one here, this one's going to be 3.5. Okay? So this information here is not really any, is, is no longer relevant. So we'll just cross it out so we don't get confused. All right, I'm going to go in with my usual area one and area two. Now, area one, again is a half circle so it is pi r squared divided by 2 which is pi times 8.5 squared divided by 2 and that leaves me with 113.49 square meters area 2 is also half a circle so we're going to use pi r squared divided by 2 and that will give me pi times 3.5 squared. I'm getting a 3.5 from here, divided by 2, which is going to leave me with 19.24. Now my area total is going to be area 1, the bigger circle here, okay, the bigger half circle, minus area 2, the smaller half circle, okay. And that, I just sub my values in now, whoops, 113.49 minus 19.24, and that will leave me with 94.25 square metres. Question 1c is asking us to find a section or a portion of a circle. Now, we, we've done this previously in questions 1 and 2 or 1a and 1b and, and it's quite obvious that it's a half 
Okay, but what we're really doing here is we're finding 180 of 360 degrees. It's a bit like talking about eating four eighths of a pizza instead of half a pizza. This is one that just we simplify the fraction very easily. But down here, it's not easy to simplify 133 of 360 degrees. So we're going to write it as a portion. So we're basically making up our own formula here. So the area that we're trying to find here is going to be a portion which represents 133 parts of 360 of a circle. Okay, so we're going to say 133 of 360 degrees of the circle, if it was whole, is going to be the answer, which will give us 94.01 square centimetres. Question 1D is another composite shape, and so this time we're acting, we're adding a, uh, a rectangle onto a quarter of a circle. Now, again, it's it's like the portion of the circle over in question 1C. So here, when we work out this, we're going to work out 90 of 360 degrees, or a quarter of a circle here. Now. It looks as though this question can't be solved because we don't have enough information. So you have to look at this question a few different ways. Sometimes it helps to turn the piece of paper so that you're looking at it from a different perspective. If you're in a test, you might go ahead and come back and look at this if it's not obvious at first. But I can work out what the radius of this circle is because the total length is 12 millimeters and this portion is eight, which leaves me with four millimeters over here. Now if this is four millimeters, this is as well because the radius is consistent around a circle. Okay, so we could draw the rest of the circle in here if we really wanted to. So we're back to area one and area two and we're going to ultimately add them together. So area one is a nice rectangle so we're going to go with length times width as opposed to base times height which I was doing in uh, the fundamental videos. And this one's going to be 8 times 4, so 8 by 4, which is going to give us 32 square millimetres. Area 2 is going to be a sector of a circle. Now you could just jump straight to a quarter or you could just divide by 4, but for consistency, if you've been watching this question, I mean, so this is 90 of 360 degrees, so a portion of the circle. And this reads a portion of the circle, which is 90 of 360 times pi times 4 squared. And that works out to be 12.57 square millimetres. So our total area is area 1 plus area 2, making it nice and clear for both us and our marker. We're going to add those two areas together and all together that should give us 44.57 millimetres or square millimetres. Unfortunately, for some reason, the file corrupted as I did this one. So I'm just going to have to go back through what I did. This one's uh, find the total area of the composite shape again. Now this one's a semicircle with some more semicircles missing. What I did was I cheated and I joined a couple of these circles together to make two smaller circles. So ultimately I'm going to do the big half circle minus two full small circles. Okay, so area one and we called one of these little circles area two and I've put a note here so that I haven't forgotten to double it. Then when I went through it I calculated area one as being half of a circle and I've taken the radius of four which was half the diameter of the large circle and squared it and that's given me a total area of 25.13 square meters for the large one. For the little guys I was trying to find out what the radius of these were and I worked out that they were one. You see if it's eight all the way across 
and each of these pairs of four, then we basically just divide it across. But you can actually see the little radiuses there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, if you need to count them. So we've worked out what one of these area two full small circles is, as being 3.14. And then we worked out the total area of this being the large half circle. Take away two of the small little circles. Okay, and we've substituted in the value. So the large one minus two of these little guys. And the answer is that. I'd do this again, except I've only got one sheet. So you'll just have to run through that. And if that's still not clear, let me know and I'll make a new video for it. Question 2b, composite shape. So this one is a circle with a square cut out of the middle of it. Uh, we need to work out a little bit of stuff here first. We've got our sides of our square, so that's nice. We know that they're all 8.5, but we don't know our radius. So that's from the centre here out to the edge. And so that's obviously going to be half of 12, which is 6. So this is not much use to me anymore, so I'm going to cross it out so I don't get confused. I'll call the circle area one, and I'll call the square area two. So area one, it's a full circle this time, will be pi r squared. So it will be pi times six squared. If I pop that into a calculator, I will find that that is 113.10. Meters or square meters. Area two is a square, so we can just do length times width for this one, which is just going to be 8.5 by 8.5, which is 72.25 square meters. And the area total is going to be area one, subtract area two, so 113.1 take away 72.25 and that will leave me with 40.85 square meters. Question 2a is a two-part question. They want both the volume and surface areas of both of these shapes. So let's start with the volume because it's just a little bit more straightforward. The volume is the length by the width by the depth according to your formula on your shape so we're going back to this one for our volume and we can also use the surface area but we'll unpack that a little bit soon so this one's nice and simple you just sub the three values in 3.6 by 8 by 4 and that will give you 115.2 cubic centimeters now be careful we've been working in area you need to use cubic centimetres or cubic metres and your units must be right and they must be there. When we do the surface area, we need to think about how we used to unpack these maybe in year 7 or year 8. Um, your teacher might have given you nets, so you would have basically unfolded the shape. Um, or you may have been asked to cut them out and stick them together. But basically, if we fold this shape out flat like this, this would be, we could fold it up to make this shape. Now, this is important because if we number these area, let's say, let's say area 1, area 2, and area 3, we're going to look for the corresponding sides here. So if this is area one, remember that there will be one on the back side as well. So this would also be area one. Okay, we might circle them so we don't get them confused. If this is area two, then this is area two, and so is this one. And this one's area three, then so is this one here. So you can see that when we're working out the surface areas, there's actually two of each of them. Which is why when you get your formula sheet here, you need to unpack it a little bit. This means that there's two of the length times width squares, and there's two of the depth times width squares, and there's 
two of the length times depth rectangles. Okay. So we'll put it into the formula. The surface area is double the length times the width plus the depth times the width and the length times the depth. So that means there's two of them, two of them, and two of them. And basically your job is to come through and make sure that all of these three numbers do a bit of a round robin. So at some stage they're all multiplied by each other. So we'll go 3.6 by 8 plus 3.6 by 4 and then the last pair is 8 by 4. And you've got to put brackets in your calculator or this will be a disaster. Okay, so pop it in your calculator and you'll get 150.4 square centimetres. Question 2b is a cylinder. So I'm interested in the circle on the end. Okay, when I worked out the volume of this question over here, I was really interested in this and then multiplying it by the depth. But here I'm interested in the unusual shape. I have got a formula for it. Okay, I can just use the formula straight off the sheet. Pi r d d, uh, pi r squared d, and I can plug that in with no idea what I'm talking about. But what this is really saying is the area of the circle multiplied by how deep the shape is. And this is important because when we get to composite shapes, we're going to need to be able to work out the surface area of the unusual shape and then multiply it by how deep the shape is. Okay particularly in year 10 when you get to that. So here the other misleading thing is I've got the diameter. I don't want that. I want the radius. So that's 3.5. So this information is no longer of use to me. So I'll get rid of it so I don't get confused. All right. The volume of this shape is the circle on the end multiplied by how deep the shape is, which is Pi times 3.5 squared multiplied by 11, which is 423.33 cubic millimetres, okay? Now, that's important. Remember, the areas are squared, the volumes are cubed. Now, when I come to do the surface area, unfortunately, I haven't left myself much room here, but if I decide that I want to draw the net of this again, what it is, is it's a rather large rectangle wrapped around two circles, one on either end, okay? So I'm going to call this one area one, like I have been doing, and I'm going to call these guys area twos, okay? So, this is important because when I'm trying to work out the surface area of this shape, I know that I need to know, this is going to be the same, so I'm going to need one area one, and I'm going to need two area twos, okay? Now, I could work them out independently, or if I need to, I can use the formula. So if I go to the formula sheet and I have a look at it, if you have a look at this carefully, okay, this is going to work out to be the, the rectangle, and this says two circles, okay? So why is the rectangle is such a strange thing on our formula sheet, and I think I'm off the page here. Why is the rectangle such an unusual shape? Well, that's because it's easy to label this one. This one's 11 millimetres. It's always been 11 millimetres deep. But this one here is difficult to work out. And that's because it's got to wrap all the way around the outside of the circle. So in other words, it is the diameter of the circle. So this length here is going to be 2 times pi times r, or we've seen it as 2 pi r, okay, whenever we've learned it, because that's the circumference, the distance around a circle. So if you come back to your formula sheet, the surface area will be the circumference of the circle, around there, because that will form this side of the rectangle, okay multiplied by its depth, that's not the diameter, okay? So multiplied by its depth. So in other words, that times that, plus that area and that area, okay? 
So it's going to be surface area equals 2 pi r times depth plus 2 times pi r squared. I'm going to run out of room here. That's going to be 2 times pi times 3.5 times 11 times 2 times pi times 3.5 squared only just fits okay which is going to be 318.87 square millimeters question 5 looks quite complicated but it's really not it's actually just a very simple substitution question so it's talking about the volume of a cylinder so I'm going to take my volume of a cylinder formula which is this one just here okay and so it's going to be volume is pi r squared times the depth in other words it's the area of the circle on the top of or the end of the cylinder multiplied by how deep the cylinder is okay and so what I'm going to do now is just substitute in the information that I've already got so this time I've got the volume so it's 88 and I've got a depth of 14 but I don't know what the radius is so it's going to be pi r squared times 14 all right now it's just balance method from here so i'm just going to divide by 14 to get rid of it okay it says times i'm going to divide so i'm left with 88 on 14 here and i'm left with pi r squared here i'll get rid of the pi next sort of like reverse bod maths it says pi times r so i'm going to divide by pi and once i've done that that will give me a pretty awful number so i don't want to make any errors here so leave this number on your calculator I'm uh, going to write it down to four decimal places so I don't lose track of that okay now I don't want r squared I want r and it's a bit like Pythagoras okay the, the opposite function to squared is to square root okay so in balance method if it tells us to add we subtract if it tells us to multiply we divide if it tells us to square we're going to square root and so that means that R, and I'm just going to write that on the left because I like to work left to right, is 1.41 millimetres. Now it's millimetres because it's a distance, okay? We're not talking about area or volume here. That's why the units stay as millimetres. Similar to question five, question six looks like it's going to be pretty ugly, but it's actually quite easy. It's a substitution question. In other words, we've got some values and we've got an unknown, okay? Now it's talking about the volume of a rectangular prism. So if you go to your formula sheet, you know that the volume is the length times the width times the depth. So we'll start with the formula. Volume equals length times width times depth. And we're going to just substitute in what we know. So we know the volume is 112. We've got a length of 8 centimetres. We've got a depth of 5, and we don't know the width, so we'll sub in what we know. And we're going to try and solve for W. So I'm going to collect my like terms. Okay. Now, it's just balance method, so if I've got 40 W's, that's no good to me, so I will divide by 40 to remove it. Anything I do on this side, I must do to the other. So what I'm left with is W equals 112 divided by 40, which is 2.8 centimetres. The units are centimetres, not squared or cubed, because this is a distance, okay? We're measuring the width of a shape. Measurement can be really useful for us if we want to do landscaping around our backyard or if you want to do something in our house as well. So here's a good example. This question is um, a good one because it asks you for area, 
volume and also unit conversion and its composite shape as well. So here's a real world example of where you'd use measurement. I've got two areas except this time I've got a green area which is going to be grass or turf and I've got a brown area which is going to be my garden. I want to grass the area or turf the area that's green and I want to put mulch down in the area that is brown. So I always look at a landscape and start by having a look at the two areas. Okay, So if I worked out the area of the grass, the first thing I need to do is notice that it has slightly different um, sizes than the bed. So it's 4 metres by 8 metres. And so the area of the grass is nice and easy. It's just a rectangle, so it's length by width, which is going to be 4 by 8, which is 32 square metres. The area of the garden is going to be a little bit different, okay? It's going to be the area of the backyard minus the area of the grass. So if we have a look at this, the area of the backyard is a rectangle, it's 6 by 10, and we've already worked out the area of the grass, but for argument's sake, it's 4 by 8. And so that means we've got 60 minus 32, which is 28 square metres. All right. So we're starting to get there. We've got the area of the grass, which is really all we need because turf is sold per square metre. We can see this over here as part of the question. But we've only got half the information that we need for the garden because you, when you purchase mulch, you buy it by the cubic metre. Okay, so it's a volume question. So we've got the area of the garden, but the volume of the garden is its area. 28 multiplied by its depth and it tells me that it needs to be 10 centimeters deep. Now if you think about the garden as being a three-dimensional shape, so if I draw it over here, we know that the area which is the part that I've drawn now so it's, is going to be 28 and then we need to think about its depth. Because purchasing mulch is a volume. And we don't times it by 10 because this area is in square metres. So we have to convert 2 metres. So the depth is 0 0.1 metres. Okay? There are 100 centimetres in a metre. So what you need to do is you need to find that out by saying 1 or 10 divided by 100. Okay, now that means that we've got 28 square metres multiplied by 0 0.1 metres, which means that we've got 2.8 cubic metres of mulch. Now, you can't go in, unfortunately, and purchase 2.8 cubic metres. You need to purchase to the nearest metre, like it says in the question. So we're just going to round that up to 3 cubic metres. And now it's really easy. We'll just skip over here now and we'll say, right, so to answer this question, grass, the cost of grass, will be its area, which is 32, by its cost, which is 15. Will work out to be $480. And then the cost of the mulch 
is its volume, which is three meters or three cubic meters, multiplied by its cost, which is thirty dollars per cubic meter, which is ninety dollars. So if the question was to ask it, the total cost to landscape this backyard would be $480 for the turf and $90 for the mulch, which would work out to be $570 altogether. In this question, we're being asked to do something that's a bit abstract. We've been asked to write an algebraic expression to describe the area of this shape. Now, we can see that this shape's a rectangle. So we know that the formula for this is that the area of any rectangle is the length multiplied by the width. Just be careful. We're being asked for a expression, okay, which means there's no equal signs when we write it, technically. And it's going to be algebraic, which means there's not really a definitive answer for this in terms of numbers. You're, you're effectively writing a rule, okay? So what happens here is if we take the length and multiply it by the width, it would look like this. It would be, let's say that's the length, and it would be multiplied by the width, okay? And what you would normally do is you would expand this as well so you had a clean algebraic expression. So remember that looks like this. That times that and that times that. So we say 2x times 3x makes 6x squared. 2x times 2 makes 4x. And this is our answer. Don't take it any further, there's no answer for X.